I've never seen anybody protest leprechauns, have you? I've never seen a group of people protest the Tooth Fairy or Santa Claus. However, I've seen many people protest and complain about God. Now, why is that? Why do people feel the need to protest God if they also claim that he doesn't exist? This is the topic I'm going to talk about today. Today, I'm going to talk about how every person knows God. Hello, everyone. My name is Andrew Kim, and this is Theology 101. This channel exists to explain Christian theology in simple language. If this is your first time watching, please subscribe and leave a comment to let me know what topics you would like for me to cover in the future. Now with that out of the way, let's jump into today's topic. Today I'm going to talk about general revelation. General revelation is the idea that God has revealed himself to all people in certain ways. Whether you're a Christian or not, whether you read the Bible or not, these are things about God that we all know to be true through general revelation. Now, there's three ways in which God reveals himself generally to all people. First is through nature. I want you to look at Psalm chapter 19, verses 1 to 4. The psalmist writes, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. I want you to notice all the phrases the psalmist uses in this passage. Proclaims, pours out speech, reveals knowledge, voice goes out. In other words, even though nature doesn't talk, it speaks of God's existence. The universe, the sky, the oceans all proclaim who God is. Now you might be wondering, what if you're blind? What if you can't see all of creation? What if you can't see nature? How can you know God? exist? Good question. Notice what the psalmist writes at the end of verse 6 in the same chapter. Nothing is hidden from its heat. Although a blind person cannot see the sun, he or she can feel its heat. Although a blind person can't see the sky, he or she can feel the wind. In other words, even a blind person can feel with the other senses creation and nature that points to God's existence. This is why the Apostle Paul writes this in Romans chapter 1, verse 20. For his invisible attributes, namely his internal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. In other words, we don't have excuse to say God didn't provide enough evidence for his existence because if we look at creation and everything he has made, then we can see God. Now, the second way God reveals himself to everyone is through history. The theological term for this is divine providence, and it is a belief that God doesn't just allow history to happen, but he orchestrates history in such a way that it fulfills his plan. One example of divine providence is in John 18. In John 18, Jesus is standing on trial in front of Pilate because the Jewish leaders conspire to get him executed. Now, the Jewish leaders and Pilate have a very tense relationship because Pilate failed to stop previous Jewish insurrections, and so Caesar really doesn't like Pilate and the way that he's handling the Jewish population. So, so Caesar tells Pilate, if one more insurrection happens, you're done. And so Pilate knows that Jesus is innocent. He doesn't want to execute him, but the Jewish leaders also know he has to do whatever they say or else Pilate will get in trouble by Caesar. Jewish leader says, hey, we can't, we can't execute him according to Jewish law, and so you must do it according to Roman law, and that is how Jesus ended up getting crucified. Now, the apostle John writes something very interesting in John chapter 18, verse 32. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus has spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. All of these things and events were planned in order to make sure Jesus would die a certain way. You see, the Old Testament predicted in Psalm 22, in Isaiah 53 and Zechariah 12, that the Messiah will be pierced or later we find out crucified. Now here's the interesting thing. When these texts were written, crucifixion wasn't even invented. Crucifixion was invented by the Persians in three to 400 BC, and it didn't become the form of capital punishment until later on with the Romans. How can God predict that the Messiah will be pierced if crucifixion wasn't even invented and wasn't a form of capital punishment. Well, God orchestrated history in such a way that the Roman Empire took over after the Persians 
and they instituted the crucifixion as a form of capital punishment. God orchestrated that Jesus would not be a Roman citizen because Roman citizens weren't allowed to be crucified. Instead, they were beheaded like the Apostle Paul. God orchestrated a tense relationship between Pilate and the Jewish leaders so that Pilate had to do what the Jewish leaders wanted to do, even though he knew Jesus was innocent. And God orchestrated it in such a way that the Roman government would execute Jesus by crucifixion instead of Jesus being stoned according to Jewish law. All of these things had to happen in order for Jesus to be crucified when he did. That is how God reveals himself through history or divine providence. He orchestrates things in such a way that his promises always happen. The third way that God reveals himself to everyone is through people. In other words, God creates us to be a certain way that reveals who he is. This is called the image of God. All of us, regardless of our religious beliefs, are made in the image of God. What that means is that we're made in his likeness or we resemble God in some ways. It doesn't mean that we are God or identical to God, but it does mean that we share some characteristics with God. Namely, we are rational beings because God is rational. We are emotional beings because God is emotional. And we are moral beings because God is moral. Listen, even if we all disagree on what is right or wrong, we all agree that there are some things that are right and some things that are wrong. Even if we disagree on the purpose of life, we are all searching for a purpose in life. You see, deep down, every single one of us have been stamped by God, which means we know we have a creator because of how we have been made. The problem is not that God hasn't revealed himself to us. The problem is that we suppress that truth because we don't want to submit to God. But just like a beach ball that gets pushed down into the ocean, eventually it'll pop back up. We keep pushing away that knowledge about God, but eventually God keeps popping up again. Now, I want to be clear and say that general revelation is not enough to save you or give you a relationship with Jesus. That requires special revelation. But general revelation is enough to make you accountable to know that there is a God. General revelation is sufficient to condemn, but insufficient to save. Just from general revelation, we have enough to know God's existence and his power. But it takes special revelation to know God's love and compassion and mercy for us. Think about a powerful boxer, someone like Mike Tyson maybe. Everyone sees Mike Tyson's power in the ring. Everyone can see how powerful he is when he knocks out a person in 20 seconds, right? But only those in his inner circle, only those who have special access to Mike Tyson can see his love and tenderness and compassion when he holds his baby daughter. In the same way, everyone can see God's power just by looking at nature, looking at history, and even looking within ourselves. But only those with special access to God, with a special revelation from God, can see his love and his mercy for us, specifically through the cross of Christ. And so regardless of your background, all of us know God. This is why we all feel a need to protest and complain to God, even though we also claim that we don't believe in God. And the fact that some of us blame God for the bad things in our lives prove that we assume he exists because you cannot blame a God that you don't believe exists. I hope this video has been helpful for you in understanding that everyone knows God. However, there are problems with general revelations, which is a topic I will talk about in a future video. Please remember to subscribe and leave a comment and let me know if there's any topic you would like for me to cover. Until next time, see you. <music>